prostitution, uh, that's illegal. A procurement is illegal. And if you have a procurer with prostitutes paraded in front of you, then uh, as a sworn law enforcement officer, you, uh, you're asking yourself, well, what do they think of us? The first night or so I was there, someone uh, took me aside and said that it's a good idea to keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. Prostitution, uh, that's illegal. A procurement is illegal. And if you have a procurer with prostitutes paraded in front of you, then uh, as a sworn law enforcement officer, you, uh, you're asking yourself, well, what do they think of us? But there were times when he would go into private gatherings and private activities where uh, I felt that he opened himself to danger, to hazard, and uh, things that weren't very mildly not becoming the President of the United States, to say the least. Strange situation. Yeah. This Camelot, you don't, uh, you don't rock the boat. And this continued constantly. It was just not uh, once every six months, not every New Year's Eve, but it was a regular thing. And I remember one time I was with the President in Honolulu. During that trip, he went to uh, uh, Battleship Arizona and, uh, and a few other things. Uh, a president arrived at the residence about on time. Uh, I'd say within 10 minutes, uh, a staff member arrived in a car uh, escorting two ladies, and they marched in the house also. This was sort of the usual routine in many stops. And a, a colonel of the Marines uh, turned to me and said, uh, uh, who are they? And I turned to him and I said, well, they're, they're um, secretaries and I, I assume there's some work the president wants done this evening. We protected the president in many different ways. But the Honolulu episode made me angry. It didn't make me angry. We're talking about the president of the United States. I'm not a holier-than-thou guy, but he just shouldn't be doing this in public like this. There was no regard for who was there. The Marine colonel was there. He knew what, you know, what's going on. Other people were there. The Navy people were in the house. Cooks were in the house. Mm, you know, he's the president. He's the boss. I didn't like it, but uh, what you going to do about it? <laughs> Nothing. And you see another facet that would make you not want to ever associate with him off the job in a bar or a restaurant or spend time, certainly not letting babysit your sister. Agents report that the president often spent private time with young women on the White House staff. Two of them were secretaries, known by the nicknames Fiddle and Faddle. Fiddle and Faddle joined the uh, Kennedy campaign in Los Angeles, and uh, after he was elected, they were assigned to work in the White House. But it became apparent that they were there to uh, be scooped up and taken into the pool at noon with JFK. And uh, uh, the term we heard, they would go skinny dipping with, with Jack. 
and uh, they appeared to be the sole afternoon entertainment for the president. And occasionally one of the White House staff members would take one or two of them upstairs when the president was up there. But this never happened when Jacqueline Kennedy was in town or when she was in the White House. In the Kennedy White House, members of the Secret Service were concerned that the president's private behavior made him a potential target. Many people came to the White House who did not know who they were. He had a tendency to surround himself with uh, ladies sometimes that uh, were a little worrisome. These women were of questionable character. We didn't know if these women were carrying listening devices, if they had syringes that, that carried some type of poison, or if they had Pentex cameras that would photograph the president for blackmail. Possibility of blackmail and, and, and uh, things like that are astounding. Uh, who knows? I never, I never knew the name of one of the, the outsiders. One night in Seattle, we took the president up to the Olympic Hotel to secure for the night. And as we were doing that, a high-ranking uh, law enforcement official from King County had come out of the elevator with two prostitutes and was walking down toward the president's door. And a senior staff member came out of the president's suite, thanked him for bringing the girls up and took them into the suite. So one of the policemen uh, the lieutenant asked me, he said, does this go on all the time? And I didn't know what to say, and I said, well, we travel during the day. This only happens at night. You were on an elite assignment. It was the most elite assignment in the Secret Service. And uh, you were there watching an elevator or at a door because uh, the president was inside with, with two hookers. Most of the other Secret Service agents and myself were worried about the fact that uh, the Russians or uh, communists or any people like that could bring in a, a ringer, so to speak. The concerns of the Secret Service went beyond the dangers that prostitutes might pose. The agents learned that the president was using dangerous medication. While I was working the White House, there was a doctor, I, I believe his name was Jacobson, who we used to call Dr. Feelgood. Uh, he'd uh, per periodically come to the White House with a case full of medications that possibly could have been harmful. Dr. Max Jacobson had a loyal following among celebrities in New York and Hollywood. He injected his patients with what he called vitamin shots that boosted their energy and confidence. We learned that Jacobson would inject himself too. so. Sometimes when he came to the White House, his speech was slurred, and he was going up to the floor, going to the pool room to give the president a shot. We assumed because he was a doctor and, and had uh, permission to go to see the president that he was it was okay for him to go in. Someone took out a sample of, of what he was giving the president, and the sample mysteriously got to Bobby Kennedy, who had it analyzed and it turned out to be amphetamines. Official logs show that Dr. Jacobson made more than 30 visits to the White House. Of course, both Russia and the United States at that time had the thermal nuclear bomb. And if the president turns around and starts having hallucinations, he was one reach from the red phone on his desk when he was taking these injections. In fact, when he was meeting Khrushchev, the summit meeting, Feel Good went with him expressly to keep the injections going to the president. The president depended on Jacobson during his first summit meeting with Khrushchev, and he continued to depend on the doctor's treatment through some of the most difficult periods of his presidency. Both Robert Kennedy and the official White House physician Janet Travell tried to convince the president he should stop seeing Jacobson but they failed. According to Jacobson's records, he last saw the president in Florida as he was preparing for the November trip to Dallas. Max Jacobson's medical license was revoked in 1975 after one of his patients died